Hello and welcome back to another episode of Project Supercar. Now this is part two, following on from part one, where I was trying to remove the blower unit from this prototype DIY supercar that I built using an old Audi estate that I only paid £300 for. something. Now this is the prototype and it isn't finished and I remember when I was designing this um, bulkhead here I needed an extra two centimeters of clearance about here to get the blower unit out. Now there's nothing I can do with the Audi parts, they're the parts that I'm using um, I can't change them so I have to make my design fit the Audi parts. Now this part of the roof isn't finished yet. There's supposed to be a new piece which will be the drip tray which will be bolted or sort of semi sealed and bolted here but it is intended to be removable because if you look at the way the water runs down it's going to go straight into this area which obviously I don't want. So there is supposed to be a drip tray across here and then when I was going to design and build that I was going to put the two inch or two centimeter clearance here. Just remember that so what that means is I can't get this blower unit out without there is another way of doing it you can remove the servo which that's a poor design and I'm not going to be removing the servo just to get the blower unit out. So we'll just leave this in place and we'll just take a look at the bulkhead. So this is what remains of the bulkhead that I chopped out of the first donor car which was an Audi A6 C4. Now it's not intended to be part of the finished car, the finished supercar. The idea is, is that a fiberglass reproduction of this bulkhead will be done once I've finished all the tidy up and the trim. See, I've got to finish this area here, but I can't finish this area until I've finished this area, which is the roof. And of course, that should be fiberglass. So there's a lot of unfinished details that I just can't finish until other jobs are done. These holes will just be blanked off. This will be fiberglass and there is a steel frame behind this bulkhead that supports the steering and the pedals and everything else. So the fiberglass itself won't support any weight or structure of the car. Now this is the new blower unit and air conditioning unit I took from the new donor car which is an Audi A6 2.7T. And as you can see, it's much bigger than the one from the Audi A6 C4. This blower unit is huge. Hmm, gonna have to have a rethink. So if we take a look at the blower unit from the Audi A6 2.7T and we just place it inside the bulkhead of the prototype, we can just see how big it is. Now obviously this bulkhead here is in the way, so I can't put this blower unit all the way up in the correct position, but that blower unit should be roughly where this one is here 
And then when we take a look at this part, it looks like it's going to end up under here somewhere. And that could be a bit of a problem. Now if I can get it to fit, the air conditioning and heating system on this supercar is going to be fantastic. But that's if I can get it to fit. Okay, this is a little difficult to film, so I hope you can make this out. The wheel on the new donor car, the Audi A6 2.7T, is considerably more in to the wheel arch than on my prototype supercar. So if you just make a note of this wheel here, you can see it's tucked right in. Just take a note of the windscreen here and the, how it lines up with the centre of the tyre. Now, if you take a look on the prototype, this wheel is pushed out a lot more. See the relationship of the windscreen? It is almost on the outside, or should I say, the inside of the tyre here. So the good news is, is this wheel is being pushed out away from the bulkhead. The bad news is it's much higher up to this bulkhead here. So there's a lot of engineering problems that need to be sorted out on this dashboard. Now some of you out there might say use another blower unit. Well yes you could, but that causes a whole host of other problems because now the dashboard won't line up to whatever new blower unit I get. Um, the Audi A6 2.7T, which is the um, C5, is also the same platform used in Volkswagen. I believe it's the B5, so it's the Passat, and I've managed to find some footage of the blower unit from the Passat, and it's very similar to the Audi A6, but the vents are in a different place. Take a look. So the Passat's not going to work. I might be able to use another blower unit from say an Audi A3. I'm going to have to have a look online, see if I can find some images or go to a scrapyard or something, see if I can actually look at one in the flesh, if, as it were. But that means I've got to try and get all the electrics and the wiring loom from the Audi A6 to run an Audi A3 blower unit or maybe an Audi TT blower unit. And this, is, this of course is all adding to the expense of the final kit that I hope to try and develop. I wanted to get everything from the same donor car as much as I can, but already we've found out we can't use a steering rack, we can't use the radiator, front radiator, and now we can't use the intercoolers from the Audi A6 2.7T. And if I can't use the blower unit, then that's another expense I've got to try and figure out. But it might fit, I don't know. I won't know for sure until I chop out the bulkhead from the new donor car and I try and develop the new turbo chassis and we'll just see if it fits. 
who knows. Um, I did try and find some information on how Lamborghini solved this problem because as we know uh, Lamborghini uses a lot of Audi parts. I thought maybe if I could find out what Lamborghini uses then maybe I could try and find where which car that came from, maybe an Audi A3 or TT or whatever. So I was on, uh, on so I was looking on the internet trying to find some information. I have managed to find this video so we can have a closer look of what's inside the dashboard of a Lamborghini. How's it going guys? My name is Tavares and today my cheap Fast and Furious Lamborghini gets some weight reduction because we're taking out the dashboard. How hard could it be? Alright, let me show you around the car now that it has been significantly lightened. So this is the dashboard and it's almost ready to come out. I say almost because I have no idea where the bolts are over there, but we'll find that out. If you take a look over here, you'll see that I had to move a lot of stuff around. So these were all on bolts and in order to get the dashboard out, there's two 8mm bolts up there and uh, then there's some down there and there's one all the way up there that you can't see and I found some really interesting stuff on the other side as well this panel was super hard to take off because there's bolts and the only way you get them off is uh, on the inside I cheated a little bit and I just <laughs> I just bent it this is supposed to be straight so I bent it and I got to the bolts and uh, now it's off I didn't break anything and I can bend it back it's not a big problem but what I do see down there is you take a look it's like a switch panel. I don't know what that switch panel does, but it looks like it says Coney Diagnosis. It says DRL USA version and output diagnosis. So I don't know if this is a dealer level thing, but I definitely found an Easter egg in the car. That's actually pretty cool. But as far as taking this apart, uh, there's a bolt right here. There's three bolts or just two, I'm not sure. Uh, there's a bolt right here. I'm not sure I'm gonna take that out and just a I, I don't know why that's there. That seems kind of out of place. It's just a self-tapping screw. So uh, I just take all these bolts out and hopefully there's none up there because I can't get my hand in there. And then this thing should be good to go. At least that's the idea. So here she is in all her naked glory. This is uh, what a Lamborghini Murcielago looks like without a dashboard. And uh, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Now, it doesn't look that bad. Um, there's no frayed wires, there's uh, no signs of water ingress, except for, if you look over there, can you see that? That's where <laughs> there is an air gap, and uh, that's gonna need to be filled in with some uh, window sealant, because when they install this window, they definitely didn't do a great job. Well, didn't really get as much information as I wanted from that video. I mean, it, it does help. It gives me an idea, you know, that sort of thing. But I'm going to have to do some more research, see if I can figure out this blower unit problem. Well, I'm sorry this, um, this episode didn't quite go to plan. <laughs> I was thinking, I'll take the blower unit out, and then I'll take the bulkhead out, and then we'll take a look. No, I've just realised, and uh, this is the fun and games of, of developing your own supercar. I've got to take a two centimetre cut out of the bulkhead there so I can get the blower unit out as part of the ongoing development. And for me to do that means I've got to lift the roof off this chassis. And that's not something I want to do at this stage. I want to do that when the build begins, when I've raised enough money and I can buy the fiberglass and I can start turning these pieces of this car into a finished prototype. So, um, hope you've enjoyed this episode. I, I tried my best with this one, didn't quite go to plan. So what we'll do is I think we'll leave it there and I shall pull the um, 
pedals out of the new donor car in the next episode, in the um, donor car episode. And then what we'll do in the next episode regarding the prototype, we'll cover the pedals and see if we can uh, go over the details and the problems you may face if you're trying to design and build your own DIY supercar. So that's it, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.